Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter, here with a confession that everything is cuter in a jar. I don't know if you've ever realized that's true, but if you put things in jars that don't belong in jars, they're adorable. These are just a few of the things I've put in jars over the years on my Instagram. And yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> things in jars. Well, Lanpon came out with a new jar, and this jar comes with some beans that are all masked out already for you. They're all in one lump, or you can do your own combination. And here you can do a jar that is running out of jelly beans. If you wish, you put smiley faces on them, all kinds of things. But I'm gonna give you some tips on how to use a jar and other stamps, not just this one. And I'm gonna use the Lon Fawn Jet Black Ink, which I only just now, I don't know, I think I've been living under a rock, just figured out is good for Copic and for watercolor. Okay, one ink for everything. That is pretty awesome. So there you go. Sandy learned something new. So I'm going to stamp on both Nina and on some Arches cold pressed watercolor paper. And I'm going to make a mask for the lid. And for that, I'm just going to use some Eclipse tape. And there's it comes in small rolls and big rolls. I just use a big roll because I, I can tear off a little piece. And then trim it out with my little detail scissors so that I can mask it out and uh, block it off when I stamp the jar. I'll use my Lon Fawn chamois to clean it off. This is a little rag sort of thing that you can keep wet in your craft room and it's really good for cleaning off all the ink really well without leaving a lot of fuzz behind. Lining up the jar, and I'm doing it on a piece of acetate first just to check and make sure that my two sides are even. So that's one way when you're masking things that you can check your alignment before you actually do your stamping. And then I'll place my my little lid in place, my little mask, and voila. So there we go. Now to put things in the jars, I had stamped a whole bunch of those, so you'll see a couple different things. I'm stamping the hang in there sloth. You can see he hangs out past the lid. So I'm gonna put a little piece out here of the scratch masking tape and uh, kind of block that off. You could also do what I just did, which was take the chamois and wipe off part of it. But I just wanna make sure I don't get too much extra ink out there. There are some stamps and some masking you can use that chamois for entirely. But here is my Copic color hang in there. Looks really cute. I drew little holes in the lid because he's a sloth and he needs to breathe. So you might want to draw holes in your lid if you put things in there. This is the watercolor version. All right, so that's one thing you could put in a jar. Well, how about kitties in a jar? This Meow You Down set has a bed, but you can't really stamp easily the kitty in the bed. Well, I'm gonna use my chamois to wipe off the back side of the bed. So I'm just stamping the front part of the bed. So I'm gonna get that lined up, stamp it, press it down. And this is a Misty, by the way. If you have not seen a Misty before, you might want to get one because for masking things, it's really fabulous. And this is the mini Misty. It comes in two sizes. I will link you in the doobly-doo to a whole playlist full of Misty stuff. All right, so now I've got my mask for that bottom portion. I'll stamp my kitty in here. Notice I'm leaving it in the Misty so that it's going to stay in place. And now I'm put a mask of the kitty and stamp the part that goes in the back. You always mask from the front piece to the back piece. So I started with that front panel, put the kitty in the middle, and then back of the bed in the back. And there it is all colored up with its little carpet in the bottom. I guess that's carpet, not really sure. Anyway, next up is going to be a different kind of masking with the Sewn With Love set. And this is something where if you have a whole bunch of small objects, you can put a lot of things in the jar. Start with the largest objects, work toward your middle ones, and just keep filling them in. And you'll have to keep finding smaller and smaller objects as you go to just keep stamping them one by one to fill in the space. Now when you fill in a jar like this, don't worry about the whole jar being filled completely to the top. It doesn't have to fill evenly. It can kind of slide downhill a little bit going to fill in as many of these little thimbles as I can and then in order to get a few of them into some of these little spaces I'm going to use the thimble 
and stamp it just using some quick masking. Um, you notice I didn't do anything other than put a little piece of sticky note across something. And depending on how far over the stamp's gonna go, you can figure out exactly where you need to put your little masks. But it's not that hard to do, and you don't have to cut out, you know, stamp and trim masks and things. Just keep filling in with smaller ones. Now, eventually you'll get down to really small spaces and you'll have to figure out what are you going to put in those. You could continue to mask out with sticky notes, but what I decided to do was just draw in a few portions. These are going to be in the background, sort of, and you can color them with really dark colors, so if your drawing doesn't go really well, just make them dark because they're deep in the inside. But I'm using some of the same kind of patterns that I'm seeing on the other objects that are in here, so it'll look like they continue. Some of them I can put the two ends of the wooden spools, uh, it can draw little pieces in there, it really depends on how high up you want all of the elements to go. Here I'm using a Copic friendly pen. If you're going to use watercolor, use a watercolor friendly pen. This is a Copic multi-liner, but you can also for watercolor use some, uh, some like Sharpie type things. So there it is, all colored in and finished. And this last one I want to show you is from the Bah Humbug set, it was a Christmas set. But I thought it'd be really cute to put sheep in a jar. I don't want the full sheep in there. I just want it to look like there's a whole bunch of cotton balls in there that have faces. So that would be kind of funny. Yeah, I'm weird that way. And I just used a quick post-it note mask to just get the little face. And then I'll do another one of the little sheepies and I'm going to do him kind of at an angle. And just tuck it underneath using the Misty to figure out generally where my placement should be. And I'll block off that outside edge so the black doesn't end up going outside my jar. So this might look really weird right now, but again, I'm going to draw pieces in. Little oval shapes for his little, his little hoofs. And then I'm going to continue drawing the outside pieces. With any jar, for the most part, any glass, if you leave some white along the outside edge, that tends to make it look more like glass. So I'm going to make my cotton balls stop short of the outside edge and just basically draw scallops, just a whole bunch of poofy scallops. Kind of figuring out where I want them to go. Let's see, put another one over here, down in the corner, and pull that up here. And I'm just sort of looking to see where this is going to end up. Um, is he going to end up being the top, is there going to be something in front of him? You can just sort of make your own arrangements for how much is shoved into your little jar and then color it up. Isn't that cute? So adorable. Now there's one more that I did, but I didn't film it. Uh, the stamping of it was pretty simple, straightforward. I only had to mask out the helmet and then just colored it up with my Copics. I hope this is helpful for those of you who've been trying to do some masking, enough tips in here to get you started. Go put something in a jar because it's hilarious. It'll make your recipient smile when it's something really ridiculous in a jar. You can check out more of my videos, click on my face to subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.